Hey friends, what's going on? David Potts with Song Notes here, and I have a warm-up exercise to teach you today. Okay, so this one is gonna be a relatively beginner-friendly exercise. We're gonna be in the key of D, okay? The techniques we're gonna focus on are that of alternating bass notes, right? Specifically on the D chord and the A chord. And we're also gonna involve walking bass lines that sort of transition into chords, okay? So we take these techniques, we throw them together, and we get this 16 measure sequence. So this is gonna combine your D, your G, your A. We'll also have some variations of A7 in there, of D7. We'll have an E major chord. We combine all these together and we get this little sequence. This is a fun thing to play if you wanna practice those alternating bass lines, if you wanna practice those walk-ups. And uh, my PDF that I made here, you can get it at playsongnotes.com, is a great way to follow along with what I'm showing you after you watch this video. So let me play this exercise for you twice. I'm gonna play it at a slower speed, then I'll play it a little bit faster. And after that, I'll go through and explain the technique I'm using. I'll walk you through some of this stuff in case you wanna sort of learn this one for yourself. So uh, let's get into it. Remember, playsongnotes.com is where you can find all this, and uh, I'll see you on the other side. Let's do it. All right, so there we have it, a slower playthrough and a faster playthrough, both using the exact same tab. So let me just walk you through some of the things you wanna keep in mind when you're practicing this one. Um, the first is gonna be um, just understanding the raw ingredients, the sort of things you'll be using to make this exercise work. Starting with the chords, you know, those are gonna be um, starting off with a D, a G, and an A. Okay, simple one, four, five in the key of D. Now for the G, however you play your G chord, right? There's lots of different options with fingering. Um, I typically am not playing the second string. No, I'm sorry, I'm playing it, I'm just not pushing it down, right? So I'm playing third, um, then I'm usually doing open, 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 third. I'm usually not playing this fifth string at all. I'm just sort of strumming. Um, if I'm doing the bass note, I'm only doing the thinnest four strings. And if I'm strumming the full chord, this finger is sort of muting the fifth string, right? Just sort of draping into it. So that's your D, G, and A. You're also gonna need things like an A7. Right, open, open second, open second, open. And then another A7, which is how it starts, is the same thing, but the third fret on the highest E string. Okay, I'm gonna let that chord ring for a second before you get into the exercise. You're also gonna need a D7 at one point. Okay, get used to going between a D and a D7. Good thing to practice. And uh, there's an E chord in there as well, right? An E major. So nice, relatively straightforward open chords here. Uh, and the next thing I would say is if you look at this exercise, there's, there's two techniques that are being used over and over again, right? It's good to notice these things because then you can just practice that te the techniques on their own. One of them is the idea of alternating your bass notes with a D chord and with the A chord. What that means is you're gonna pluck the normal bass note of the chord. So for the D, that's the fourth string. Then you strum the rest of the chord. And then you pluck the fifth string and then strum the full D chord. So you're gonna go like this. Right? Fourth string, fifth string, fourth string, fifth string. 
Um, this is a technique that's used in many songs, this, this exercise included. Now in this exercise, it's gonna be two strums after each bass note. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Get comfortable with just that on its own uh, before you attempt the full exercise. Same with the A chord, right? Between fifth string and sixth string. Fifth string and sixth string. Similarly, you need to do two strums between each bass note. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right? Uh, okay, so that's one thing. The other thing that's happening here is there's quite a bit of these um, walk ups into chords, right? So lots of times we're transitioning to a D and we're going to walk, want to walk up on the fifth string, open to second to fourth, and then open fourth string. You can sort of practice this in a loop if you want. Just get a D strum going on, and every now and then, walk up to it. Okay, you can do that with the A as well. This is gonna be second to third to fourth on the low E string. Second, third, fourth. I'm talking about fret, and you're using your index, middle, and ring finger. And then you end with the open fifth string. This is a good thing to practice as well, right? Getting a nice little loop. Try to be clean with your bass notes. And then you can sort of combine these together, right? You messed up there. So that's one technique. If you practice that now in isolation, it'll make playing the full exercise a lot easier, right? Um, the other little trick that's going on here in a few places, it's on the first, second, and third line, is we're going between a D chord, well, we're, we're going into a G chord, basically, right? Um, and what we're gonna wanna do, though, on the note before the G is play the second fret on the low E string. So we're gonna be on a D chord, for example, right? Right, that dum bum. That's a little bit tricky. We're gonna want to do two down strums, and you're, you're gonna want to use. I use my middle finger for the second fret and my third finger for the third fret, and then I just put my pinky on the other third fret. Right? You could practice this in isolation. You could practice that in isolation too, right? Just repeat the bass note drum. Get up to the D, you know, I'm just sort of putting together little sequences based on what I've showed you. Let's go to the G one more time. Okay, so those are like the building blocks of this. You learn those chords, you learn the alternating bass notes, you learn those walk-ups, and you learn that little G transition and then everything else is just stitching all that together. You just follow the tab. You take it one line at a, one line at a time, go slow, get that line good, you know, and then uh, basically move to the next line, right? A couple other, two little minor things at the end of the second line, the, the second, um, the third and fourth measure here, the walk-ups are gonna change the order of the notes, but it's the same notes. For example, instead of going, right, at the, at the end of the third measure in the second line. We're gonna go, right? We're gonna go second fret, open, fourth fret, and then open fourth string. So we're changing the order, and that just makes it stand out to the ear because your ear is expecting a pattern. It's expecting the same thing that happened last time. And by changing that order, it's adding a bit of visual, or not visual interest, it's called uh, ear, whatever, ear interest, you know, to your ear. Same with this walk up on the D um, at the very end of the second line. This is a new walk up, it's kind of a, It's all on the fourth string. Third fret, fourth 
fret, second fret, open. And just like the six string one, it's index finger on the second fret, middle finger on the third fret, ring finger on the fourth fret. Okay, so there we have it. Um, this is the exercise and um, you know, the, 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 okay, one final point while I'm at it. I think a cool thing about this is the very last measure. The important thing here is you want to capture this ascending uh, melody note on the thinnest string, right? So the thinnest string that's being played. So see the tab here. Basically, bass note pluck once, then you do second, third, and fourth string. Go to A sus4, A sus4, so second string, third fret. And then the A7 with the high E string ringing. And the important part here is you pay attention to the the, the, the highest in tone note, note of those last three strums, and it, you hear. You want those uh, treble most notes to really stand out because then it kind of gives a nice ending that has some drama and tension and it's like, oh, when's it going to resolve, right? So that's basically it. And um, I'll say this whole exercise is inspired by Gabe Lee. He's a great uh, up and coming country singer, um, hardworking, uh, great songwriter. He has two albums out. They're both good. The first one is a bit more minimal. Him, slide guitar and backup singers here and there. Um, the second one is a bit more of a full band. They're both fantastically produced, and I recommend both of them, but this is from the song Piece of Your Heart. Um, I'm sort of learning that song, and this exercise I took out of that song and modified it a bit to make it a good warm-up exercise for you. So, hey, uh, here it is again, and uh, get the PDF. It's a great way to follow along, but I wanted to thank you all for watching this far, and I hope you find the lessons helpful. Let me know what techniques or whatever you would like to see in future warm-up exercises, and maybe I'll put them together for you. Until next time, my friends, see you around. This has been David Potts. Bye-bye.